Welcome to another episode of Playing the Bounce, where we catch up with Scott International, Carl Stay, a man who's been traveling all over the world, from playing in Marty's, Kimberley, and finding himself at Glasgow, where he captains the Glasgow Warriors. Myself and Benedict ask him what his journey's been like and what's next for Carl Stay. How's it, guys? How's it, Carl? Thanks for thanks, thanks for joining us. And um, well, first and foremost, can you still say how's it to you? Because I mean, obviously, being full on Scottish citizenship now and playing for the Scottish side, can we still say how's it to you? Or, or yeah. is it out your vocab now? No, for sure. How's it? How's it works well? Um, often, yeah, that it depends on who I'm speaking to. My wife says she says if I'm speaking to South African. I sound South African. If I'm speaking to the Scottish people, then she says I develop an accent out of nowhere. <laughs> I'm just gonna ask how how's the adjustment been? Obviously, being Scotland now, in comes to Africa. What, what's it been like? I mean, weather wise and rugby wise. And most importantly, like which is better, the Scottish barbecues or the African braai? <laughs> That's an easy one. I miss a bright. It's the first thing you smell when you go back home. Um, no, no, but it's been good, Cooks. It's been, um, I always tell people, you know, that what makes it easy is the people over here in Glasgow, they're very similar to people, uh, certainly people in, you know, in, back in Joburg, um, very friendly, very down to earth, um, very welcoming people. So um, from that side of, uh, for that point of view, I've been very lucky. Um, you know, people make it easy and, and they've welcomed me and my wife here. So um, it's been good. And on, on the pitch, um, took a bit of adjusting, you know, I went to play sevens first and, you know, you, you learn a lot about your game quickly playing sevens because because there's so much space, you know, your your entire skill set gets put into the limelight pretty quickly. So any errors you make um, get punished and, and get seen. So it was a great learning experience for me, you know, to go play some sevens and then be able to bring that back um, into 15s. Sounds fantastic, Carl. Um, obviously, you started out at Griquas. Um, from Marty's, um, how how was your time in Kimberley? Like, obviously, your boy comes from Cape Town. Um, you moved to Kimberley. Kimberley is a, a very unique place, almost like the middle of nowhere. How how did you survive? How did you cope having come from Cape Town? Um, it was tough at first, Ben. To be honest, um, like you say, you know, again, the people in Kimberley are lovely. They're wonderful people, but um, you do struggle with sort of rugby taking over your whole life. You know, there's not much else to do there, so all of a sudden. Um, you know, you, you don't know what you're doing with the, uh, with the rest of your time. But as you know, you know, I played a lot of golf um, to get out of there. Um, and if not, you know, I was in Mug and Bean with, with you and Sintu kind of strapping on the three of us together, you know, making sure that we weren't going to get stuck there for too long, that we were going to move on somewhere else. So, yeah. so Carl, you're saying that um, obviously like going to Scotland, um, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the golf courses in Scotland are much better than the ones in Kimberley. <laughs> Definitely. Um, at least get a little bit of water, the ones over here. Um, you know, so they've got a bit of green to them. Whereas Kimberley, um, yeah, they didn't have didn't have a whole lot of green grass. Superb, superb. All right, you 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 made your Scotland Sevens debut. Um, you played in the series for a bit. You you went on to play for Glasgow. You now play for Scotland. Like, how's just, how how's been that transition from 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 playing Super Sport Challenge to Curry Cup? Pro 14, URC, and, and playing a bit of test rugby? Uh, yeah, oh, it's been good, Ben. Um, I suppose I, I really enjoy the challenge of it, and I really enjoy a, a high-performance environment, you know, and, and being able to have the opportunity to sort of get the best out of yourself. And, and I suppose that's what, you know, going up a level each time, um, you know, the best thing about that is, you know, as, as, as you get those opportunities, you know, there's more res- resources, there's more people available to bounce off, to have conversations with. Um, more people who have played at that level that that you can learn from, um, you know. So I suppose I just enjoyed most being able to tap into to all of those resources um, and really challenge myself to see if I could, uh, you know, to keep climbing those levels. And Carl, I mean, obviously, I mean, you've played in a number of competitions. I mean, like I said, like European Cup, Test Rugby. But I've got to ask, what is what is the, the, most, the most difficult? Is it European Cup? Is it Test Rugby or swimming in the ocean in Durban? <laughs> it's like a cook, so I tell you what. Um, somebody asked me today. They were like, "Would you rather do two two days in Scotland camp, or would you rather do two weeks back home in South Africa?" And I was like, "Jeez, I don't know. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, well, I went into the. I had a I had a Garmin watch. I had a wedding ring when I went into the ocean in um, and a full bill of health before I went into the ocean in Durban, and I came out with with neither of those three. So that probably takes the cake. <laughs> That's wild. That's wild. I mean, you you mentioned uh, a lot about your mental your mental space, your mental headspace when when you become when you go up a level. I mean, you players go through injuries, players go through um, non selection, getting dropped, losing games. Um, how do you guys get yourselves in the right frame of mind, especially when when the chips are down? I mean. The ordinary person would probably love to to get to know what it feels like to to have to go through rehab, whether it's it's six weeks or three months or nine months. Like, what's your headspace like in 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 that scenario? Yeah, in the beginning, you know, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of frustration, there's a lot of sadness, and I think um, you know the important thing is that that's all. You know, you've got to accept that that's all right, and that actually, you know, that's a good thing. Um, and you've got to allow yourself to feel those emotions because if not, you know, you, you just carry them with you. Anything you try, um, you know, just compress, you you carry them with you. So, um, you know, I've learned that, you know, let yourself feel those emotions, whether it's, you know, I like to say 24 hours. Um, you know, if, if, if I get injured, I'm like, right, I've got 24 hours. I can feel a little bit sorry for myself. You know, I can spend some time with my family, friends, whatever, get out. And then after 24 hours, you're like, right, you know, that's done. Um, this is the situation you're in, and now you know you've just got to look at you know the mountain in front of you to get back up top. You know, Carl. <clears throat> you know, Carl. I mean, obviously, the average South African rugby player the roadmap is pretty simple. You know, play Kevin Rico, play play for your province, retire. You know, such own family business. I mean, you've gone from so Marty's Kimberley all over. When you look back now at your career, when you sort of you think yourself when you're still learning Cape Town, did you ever envision yourself? You see your career going down this path, and I'm sure it must be an incredible story when you we, we look back at what has happened over the last couple of years. Yeah, of course, I definitely didn't envision it, you know, especially because, like you say, in South Africa, you know, there's a very clear roadmap, and, um, you know, guys that were in my year at school were guys like Andre Pollard and um, and Jesse Krill, you know, who um, who broke through really early, and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I'm still at varsity, you know, out in the student in the, out in the town on a Friday night, you know, and these guys are playing super rugby, and you think, yes, like you know, that that roadmap's left me behind um, completely. So um, my journey was definitely been very different, but I I wouldn't change it for the world, there, Cooks. I think I've you know the lessons you learn along the way, the memories I've got from Friday nights in Stellenbosch, you know, when those guys were having to behave for super rugby the next day. So. Um, I wouldn't trade any of it, and it's yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, I mean, you spoke about those 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 rises, and I remember obviously when we heard the news that you've moved to Glasgow. Um, you were on the fringes of that squad. You worked with Dave Rennie, and I think a few years later, now you've been named club captain. I mean, that's quite some rise. I mean, for 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 South African boy who was probably playing Super Sport Challenge a few years ago now. Like what? What has that been like in terms of you are now a, a captain? Like your your leadership qualities have always been evident, but what what are the challenges or the the excitement factors in 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 being a captain in a squad with different personalities from different places in the world? What what is that? Oh, I think it's it's been awesome, Ben. Um, you know, I think the the best part about um, you know having such a multi multinational um, squad is is that you get you know you've got so many little, little pockets that you can learn from different cultures um, you know guys bring so much to the table and so you know the number one way you've got to cope with that is you've got to look at it as, as an awesome opportunity because you've got a whole bunch of people that think differently and while to you know while sometimes that can be a challenge because you know predominantly you need guys thinking on the same page I think you, you've just got to see the opportunity that um, in that there is in, in diverse thinking, you know. Carl, I mean, obviously you've also played a bit of sevens and <laughs> I've got to ask um, which, one, which one is tougher, obviously, travelling around the world of the seven side or having to play against against Lane in the cold Irish morning and just, just, just after Christmas? Yes, like, I don't know, it cooks, that, that seven circuit is, is brutal. Like I say, you know, it's more the fear that, you know, you know, any mistake you make, you're going to be punished, especially when you're playing sides like Fiji, South Africa. Um, you know, but then again, Leinster at home, they're just, they're so different that actually I, I don't think you can, you can compare them. You know, um, sevens, it just gives you that like, 
if you know that big race, you think, you know, this is going to be a sharp battle, but it's going to be quick and it's going to be intense. Whereas Leinster, you know, I can just, I kind of just picture myself. I'm like, you know, I'm just strapping on armor everywhere. You know, you know, it's just going to be like phase after phase after phase. And you're like, you're just going to have to bar up there. So they're completely different. Um, and I think that's, that's the beauty of rugby, you know. And then Carl, obviously you mentioned, I mean, you've played now with the, with the URC, you've, Obviously, having having played back in SA again, being able to come home, the the, the, the one thing I really want to know is having changed nationalities. How long did it actually take you to memorize Flower of Scotland? <laughs> um, well, uh, Cooks, on you when you make your debut, you know, and um, because uh, we in Scotland, you know, we tend to, we sometimes have people um, from other nations, you know, playing for Scotland. So you know, on captain's run day, that you know you're going to do captain's run, and you're going to get on the bus, and the first thing you're going to have to do is an anthem check. Um, you know, the bus for, for the boys the next day. So um, I think if you don't have it memorized, you know, a lot of boys, that's when you, you find out, you know, someone will tap you on the shoulder and be like, just by the way, you know, you're going to have to sing this on the bus on Friday. Um, so you learn it pretty quickly. But mine actually came about on the seventh where, you know, uh, in my second tournament in Las Vegas, we were playing in the, um, not the cup final, but the bowl final. Did you win the bowl final at least? Yeah, we did win the bowl final, but we didn't have to sing an anthem, so it was a <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. I mean, let's wrap up with we're talking about Glasgow. I mean, Glasgow's gone through a couple of changes over the last few years. I mean, um, what what can the fans expect from Glasgow? I mean, I know you guys are trying to your, your identity is to play a bit of running rugby to to spread the ball. You've combined with Franco Smith now, who's Who's known in South Africa for being all out attack? It's, it's Franco and Swayze. They are yeah, hundred and ten percent Ben. Um, you know, we one of the biggest things we pride ourselves on at Glasgow is is our connection to the community. Um, you know, and while you can't listen to everything they say, you know, because who knows, you know, that'll change week to week what style of rugby you play then. But um, you know, it's important that we keep that connection. And historically, we have played running rugby. Um, you know, that's been the Glasgow way. Um, you know, the history of Glasgow, you know, are, is a city, you know, that punches above its weight, um, you know, and, and that's exactly what we want to show on the field. Oh, awesome, guys. Thanks, Benedict. Always adding you inside. Carl, thanks for joining us. And um, it's really great to to catch up. And we're so stoked that you are doing well. And, and guys, if you, if you want to miss a week of work, tell Carl, take Carl Stan's advice and go swim in Durban. You'll find yourself <laughs> for a week of work. But uh, Carl, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, guys. Exactly. Next time I'll be there, I'll, I'll be in Cape Town or Durban. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm Cape Town or Joburg, you won't find me in Durban. <laughs> Just stay now. All the best Good in camp. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks. thanks. Just like in the game of rugby, you too can get better at playing the parts in life. How? We call it change signs. You can learn all about it here at the Change Exchange. <laughs>